Go Hi, and welcome to the Lemonade Car Show on Rogers TV. I'm your host, Lorraine Sommerfeld. Tonight, as always, we'll be answering all of your car-related questions. The Lemonade Car Show is brought to you by OMVIC, Ontario's vehicle sales regulator, and we're produced by the APA, the Automobile Protection Association. The APA is a consumer association. It's membership-based and nonprofit, so we benefit you, the consumer. You can reach us at apa.ca or by phone at 416-204-1444. Joining me today is David Booth. He's a senior writer with the National Post, and Ellie Melnick. He's the owner of Start Auto. We'll also be taking your calls all evening at 800-968-7836. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. How are you doing, Lori? David, so cool that you're here. Oh, well, I'm, I'm honored to be here at oh. the famous show that you host. Well, though, car people will know David Booth is the preeminent car guy in Canada, so this is very cool. And Ellie, we teamed you up on purpose because oh. you two actually have a lot in common. I don't no, know that no you'll be on the same right? side. No, no pressure. Pressure. <laughs> You're both engineers. You're both like We're, we're both stuff. geeks. We left our pocket protectors at yeah, home. That's what, you, that's what she's saying. That's, that's what awesome. she's saying. <laughs> I, you were talking before we came on because you didn't think I could hear you because I said I want to talk about Volkswagen and diesel and what's going on because it's still an ongoing thing and you guys are both shrugging saying nobody cares anymore. <laughs> Would you care to elaborate? What, what is going on? Well, there's two things going on uh, specifically. One is that Volkswagen got caught cheating specifically. They were supposed to meet certain standards in the United States and for, uh, uh, in Europe. but they decided to create a defeat device which could tell when it was being tested and when it wasn't. In other words, it would pass the test in a laboratory on what's called a rolling road or a dynamometer. When you drove it out in the, uh, in the real road, it, uh, it would pollute as much as 40 times as many nitrogen oxides as it was allowed to. That's one issue. The second issue, the one that is not getting anywhere in our coverage, is the reason this has happened is that the European testing for both fuel economy and uh, emissions regulations is rife with corruption. Uh, when you're testing a car, unlike, say, the EPA, much more stringent, when they're, they're testing the cars for the NEDC, it's the new European driving cycle, you're allowed to tape up the headlights to improve the, head, uh, the aerodynamics. You're allowed to pry back the brake pads so there's no friction. Really, you are. You can, uh, uh, you're allowed to uh, have a test route that is one degree sloped downhill. So these are all perfectly legal. They In have uh, just about, <laughs> just about. These are all legal things. You're allowed to do, to do them all the time. This is part of the process. So the question isn't so much what, pe what people thought at the beginning. How could Volkswagen, how could the Germans cheat? The question is, they've been cheating so long. What took them so long to up the ante? So is everybody doing a, is it self-regulating? Like, uh, oh, it's worse industry. than self-regulating. In the United States, and of course with Canada, it's self-regulating everywhere. But in Canada and the United States, it's the uh, manufacturers themselves that test it and then certify it to the EPA that they've, that they've, uh, that they've met the standards. Now, I, I, I see your skepticism, oh, so but that that's... Kid's babysitting well, themselves. No, 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 but it gets worse. In Europe, most of it's done by third party um, uh, suppliers. So they want to set up their system so that they brag about being able to get better fuel economy than the next testing regime. There's one place I read that they painted the p uh, pavement a slipperier service so it'd be uh, uh, you know less friction and they were claiming 3.8 to 4.7 percent uh, fu uh, fewer carbon dioxide emissions, better fuel economy, and less uh, uh, nitrogen oxide emissions. It's, it's, it's rigged big time. It's rigged big time. And the consequence of that, and the, and the real interesting part of this, is that when you go back and look at all the information, the fact that Volkswagens uh, didn't pass, none of this is new information. There's been study after study uh, in Europe done saying diesels do not pass emission standards in the real world. Uh, the last study I saw uh, compiled 17 different studies of people that used uh, portable emissions testing devices in the tailpipes, real scientific stuff done by universities, and that of all the diesels they tested, 137 in all, not just by Volkswagen, across the board in manufacturers, only 18% passed, 82% failed to meet the emission standards that they're supposed to pass in the laboratory. So does that mean all this talk about clean diesel and that diesels are such a big part of our future for 
cars, does that mean across every make and model that we've been, there's a huge asterisk beside it? People are asking me, what should I be buying? And should the, I be well, diesel by design, because it's running so lean, uh, emits oxides of nitrogen way more than gasoline engine. Question is, how do you deal with it? Um, <clears throat> Mercedes and BMW have installed what's called an after-treatment system. Mm -hmm. Indy Exhaust is a very elaborate system to control and reduce the uh, emissions of oxides of nitrogen. It's expensive, and Volkswagen opted not to install it. Well, actually, one of the cars that pa failed in that West Virginia test mm -hmm. had after treatment, the SCR, the, the urea treatment that you add. Injection. What they're doing, what they're doing is if you put in enough urea, you probably can pass. I say probably, there's certainly a lot better odds. But because they don't want to tell their clients, oh, you have to come in every 6,000 miles to fill up this blue stuff, uh, this blue stuff that yeah. goes in this little bottle like a, a windshield wiper fluid, mm -hmm. they are underdosing with urea. Um, they're doing about one liter per thousand kilometers when it should be closer to two or even more. So if I'm in the car market and I'm, say I've been considering diesels for a few years because some chick on TV told me I should be. <laughs> oh, I'm um, the same way. I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of diesels. Yeah. Well, so I, I'd say be practical. And to me, unless you're doing 35 to 40,000 kilometers annually, the extra expense involved with diesel and the, ver and the various facets of maintenance and repair Will, you will not offset that expense by the fuel savings. Do you think the v, VW, because of, they got caught out with it, they were doing this more than everyone else probably, is that gonna put a lump in everybody's sales? Is it gonna be a problem for everyone well, across I mean, the board? Um, going back, and, and, and unfortunately I got all so many of the numbers running uh, through my head and I don't wanna go through them all. The European standard is way more lax for nitrogen oxides than the American quite a bit not quite half but it's or twice as much allowed now they've decided in 2017 they're going to allow testing on the road and 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 make people pass tests in real world circumstances instead of a laboratory unfortunately all the all the european manufacturers all those germans that are supposed to be so high tech they've gone back to the european commission and said um uh, you know the standard i think it's a uh, 0 0.07 grams per kilometer of nitrogen oxide that we're supposed to meet in the laboratory, we can't meet that if you test us on the road. Can't even come close. In fact, they're demanding, and I think have, 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 have gotten, uh, something called a conformity factor, which says, okay, yeah, we have to meet this standard in the laboratory, but when I'm driving on the highway, pulling the trailer, I want to be able to um, uh, emit 2.2% or 220%, twice as much more on the road than they can in the laboratory. Now the big question for me, and this is the big question in the United States, is they can't meet their own standards when they're driving on the real ro road. So they've asked for this conformity factor. You bring it to the EPA, EPA is saying they're going to have real world testing as well. Except the EPA has no history of being really nice to people saying, okay, you can't meet the standards in the, in the laboratory, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll let you get away with it on, on the real world. And th I, so, you know, th it could come out if, 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 if the EPA does instill um, real world testing for emissions, mm -hmm. that I'd say 90% of the diesels would fail. And fast forward, France is either has or considers banning diesel cars? No, uh, uh, th it's Paris actually. Yeah. And what's really interesting about this, this, this is absolutely wonderful. It's um, one part of the French government is taking Renault to court saying your diesels, as I've been mentioning, don't meet the standard when you mm -hmm. go on the real world testing if you're driving on the highway. And the other part of the government the tw that owns 20% is, oh my God, we didn't know. But they all knew. It's, it's been going on for years, these, these um, tricks that I mentioned. And everybody's known that for 20 years that uh, these nitrogen oxides are getting put out by diesels. And it's a little bit like that untouchable scene 
where Kevin Costner is talking to Sean Connery and, and, and Sean Connery says, do you really want to know where the, the, the booze is being made? And they go right across the street from the, uh, the police building into the postal office that's in the basement. Everybody knows. Okay, I think that's probably the first time we've had an Untouchables quote come into the Lemonade Car Show. I love it. The Lemonade Car Show brought to you by Omvic, Ontario's motor vehicle sales regulator, returns after this short break. When we come back, we'll be taking your calls, 800-968-7836.